Hello and welcome back. Now let's go ahead and implement the articles preview component because we don't want to show H2. Um, so before we do that, let's go ahead and see what's happening on the console. Aha, because we are not passing when we are doing the for function, when we're using the for functions, we are looping over a list and over here we get a warning. It says each list in a list, in a, each child in the list should have a unique key prop. Now this is a, a error coming from React. So if you want to go and uh, learn more, you can go to this website, but you need to provide a key to a child component. So as you can see, H2 doesn't have any key. So let's go ahead and give it a key. Uh, for now, let's give it the the title of the article and let's see if this solves the problem um, okay so let's hit save okay let's zoom out hit save refresh and uh, we still have the error message um, okay let's see oh but now we have a different error message cool let's see this error message it says encountered two children with the same key aha this is because the title of the article, right? There's no unique constraint on the article. So let's go and see on the article what we have that can be unique. So as you can see, we have the slug. So we can use it as a slug, um, something that we know for sure that it is unique. So instead of title, let's change it to slug, save the file, refresh, and your error message is no more. Hooray. So. Now this is solved. So this is the one way of doing it, right? Passing it as a prop. Uh, the second way is passing it as a... So the second way is to pass it as a meta value. So meta value looks just like a map, but you're passing a caret uh, sign. So now your component, the key doesn't have to live in your component, right? It is out of the component. So it makes your component much more cleaner because this key is React specific. It's not something that is related to your business logic. So now that is solved, let's go ahead and do some destructuring. By the way, this is how you destructure in, in Clojure and Clojure script. It's a very, everything is again data oriented. So um, yeah. So okay, let's go ahead and create our articles preview. And this article preview will accept a single argument, the article. And instead of showing the the title, let's you know use this article pre preview component here. And for now, you know, let's just copy what we have inside this component. Okay. So now we have to go to the React code and let's see how the article preview is is implemented. So as you can see, on line three, on line one, React is imported. And on line three, we have article preview component, and it is a functional component um, that has uh, that returns a div with a class of article meta. And this div has two key components: the the top component that shows the image, the username, the created ad date of the article, um, when was the article created, how many, uh, the total number of favorites count, right, and um, and on the bottom, you have the title of the article, the description, as well as uh, some text saying read more, which I believe on future will have a link. This whole thing becomes a link and it will take you to, um, to the, the detail of the, the article details page. Right. So this is what we have to implement. It's fairly simple. It's um, as you can see, it's just JSX and a, and a bunch of JavaScript syntax. So. Um, so yeah, let's just get this done. I'm going to speed up this video process because it is very, very repetitive.
So there you go. This is our article preview component. And we have only written it in 17 lines of code. And now that's pretty impressive as you can see the whole component within your from, from your screen. If you were checking out the React component, you would have to scroll through the whole whole window, right? So it having a, a concise syntax that Flourishrip provides, it does provide a lot of benefits, uh, as you can clearly see in this specific component. Next, let's delete all the mock articles that we have, since now we don't need it anymore. So let's delete it and save it, and we are done. Now let's go to Git, and let's see all the changes that we have made. Let's add, and let's leave a comment saying added CLJS Ajax library, as well as the articles preview component. Thank you, and see you next time. Bye.